Hey guys, we're now going to start talking about conservation of energy, which is one of the most important topics in physics, and you have to be really good at it. I'm going to start by giving you some conceptual information, and then we're going to jump into some problems. Let's check it out. So in this video, I'm going to talk about the two rules for conservation of energy, and you should understand these at a conceptual level. Um, both rules have to do with the idea of a system. So conservation of energy often refers to a system of objects. Now, a system of objects is just an arbitrary group of objects. Group of objects, arbitrary means that you, you make it up. You determine what the system is. So, for example, if I have two boxes going against each other, I could say, um, let's consider the system to be just this box. And if this box has an energy of 10 joules, the system has an energy of 10 joules. Uh, but I could also say, well, I want the system to be these two boxes here. And if they each have energy of 10 joules, then the system has an energy of 20 joules, okay? The energy of the system is just a summation um, of all the energies of the individual objects. It's up to you to determine what the system looks like. Some problems will tell you um, the system is made up of these two things, and then you have to go with it. Cool? Um, so you have to understand what systems are. It's just a group of objects. You can think of this as sort of an imaginary container of objects, all right? System, collection of objects. So the first rule says that the, the total energy of a system, system, right, groups of objects, is conserved if the system is isolated. Okay? The two keywords here are total and isolated. Total energy. Well, remember, total energy, let's call that E, is a combination of mechanical energy plus non-mechanical energy. Um, those are the two big groups of energies you can have. The idea here is that if the total energy of the system is conserved, this is always the same number, but you could lose some mechanical into non-mechanical and vice versa, as long as the total number is the same. One uh, analogy is if you have sort of a um, styrofoam cup and there's some coffee here and some air here and it's sealed, if you close the styrofoam cup, the heat will stay there for much, much longer than if you open it. And that's because this is an isolated container. Um, so some of the heat will go from here to here, but it stays, it still stays trapped um, inside of the cup. So that's what kind of an idea for the isolated system, though the isolated system doesn't have to be physically closed in or bound, okay? A system is isolated. Let's define what it is an isolated system. So the energy is conserved if the system is isolated, and the system is isolated if there are no external forces, okay? But obviously you have to also know what is an external force. So no external forces doing work on the object. So you could have external forces, but if you have one, there has to be another one to cancel it. There is no external work on the system. So the work done by external forces, that's what that means, equals zero, okay? No work done by external forces. Forces can be either internal or external, depending on how you determine the system, okay? For example, if I have the system made up of just this one object here, then this guy, the second block, is considered external to the system. It's not part of the system, okay? The best way to look at forces internal versus external is to do an example. All right, but the basic idea, if I could summarize all of this, everything in this box in one line, it would be that if you have, if there is no external work, if the work done by external forces is zero, then you have that the system, that the total energy is conserved, okay? That is sort of the one line idea there. Now, how to determine forces are internal or external? So let's see here, we have an example. Box slides to the force floor, so let's say the box goes to the right of the velocity V. I have kinetic friction. Kinetic is um, kinetic friction is the rubbing friction, so it's opposite to motion. To me to the left over here. And this friction is between the floor and the box. It's the only force doing work on it, okay? Uh, we have mg and normal, but they're perpendicular to motion, so they don't do work. For each one of these choices of the system below, for each of these choices of the system below, we're going to ask a bunch of yes or no questions here. So first we're going to say that we want to call the system, remember we pick, we're going to say the system is just the box. And then we're going to say the system is the box with the floor. It's a little bit more inclusive of, of a system there. So here, is friction internal? No, friction is not internal. 
um, friction is external to the system because we determine that the system is just a box and the friction is sort of outside of the system because it's between the box and the floor and the floor is not part of the system. Here the floor is external to the system. Okay. Is the system isolated? Well, no, because there is a force that's coming from outside of the system. Okay. Think about if you now open this cup and you poured some stuff in there, right? Something like that. So the system is no longer um, isolated because there's an external force that's doing work. The work done by external force is not zero. Okay. Is the energy conserved? No. The energy, the total energy is not conserved because now that there's work, and remember work is energy, there's work being pumped into the system or out of the system, the total energy is going to be uh, changing. Okay. No, and that's because the system is not isolated. Okay. Here, we, it's a little bit different because we include the floor. So now friction is an internal force because it's part of this. <clears throat> the system is isolated because the only force doing work on the system is internal. Okay, so it is because friction is internal. And energy is conserved because the system is isolated. Okay, these things are all dependent on each other. So if, this, if, the, if the force is in, um, if the force is not internal, the energy is not conserved. If the forces are all internal, then the energy is conserved. Okay, that's it for this one.